If you ever wanted to know more about the man behind the drums, here's the untold truth of Taylor Hawkins. Hawkins, born in Fort Worth, Texas and raised in Southern California, was by no means green when he was picked up by Grohl's band. In fact, he'd played alongside Canadian-American singer-songwriter Alanis Morissette. The drummer met Morissette's manager in 1995 when he was only 23 years old, according to a 2019 interview Hawkins did with Billboard, and was invited to lay down drum tracks for Morissette's upcoming album. From then on, Hawkins would enjoy a long-lasting friendship with a renowned Canadian musician and songstress. Working with Morissette seemed to be a fond memory for the Foo Fighters drummer. He apparently enjoyed her as a boss, a friend, and an artist. Hawkins said, As a musician, she gave all of us a lot of space. I mean, I said it before, I'll say it again. I destroyed her songs by putting all sorts of crazy drum stuff all over it, but she dug it. Hawkins ended up leaving Morissette's band after a couple of years' worth of recording and touring because, as he said on the Triple M podcast, he felt like he wasn't going to mesh well with the style Morissette was moving towards. He wanted to play harder and she wanted to mellow out. Either way, it turned out well for Hawkins. What's more stereotypically rock and roll than a drug problem? Rock stars have long maintained reputations as party animals and it's been that way since the early days of rock music. Johnny Cash, Ozzy Osbourne, everyone from Aerosmith, Anthony Kiedis, you name it. Every era of rock had its users and every era of rock had those who were taken early because of it. By his own admission, Taylor Hawkins almost became one of them. He told Beats 1, I wasn't like a junkie per se, but I was partying. For about a year, around the turn of the millennium, the drummer said he fell pretty hard into narcotics. Hawkins recalled being given, quote, the wrong line with the wrong thing in it, which led to a heroin overdose that put him in a two-week-long coma. But drugs were nothing new to the musician, as he told Kerrang. I used to do a lot of f drugs. He added, I believe the bullshit myth of live hard and fast, die young. I'm not here to preach about not doing drugs because I loved doing drugs, but I just got out of control for a while and it almost got me. The 2001 overdose served as a wake-up call. Even though Hawkins said he wouldn't take any of it back, he admitted that he began spending most of his spare time mountain biking instead of getting high. The activity served as, quote, a chance to clear your head out. It's always odd when we see musicians step into the world of film, but some of them have done it successfully, while others, like Foo Fighters' Taylor Hawkins, have but just their proverbial 15 minutes of on-screen glory. In 2013, Hawkins got the opportunity to portray the Stooges frontman and godfather of punk Iggy Pop in the film CBGB. The story doesn't revolve around Hawkins' character by any means, but it did constitute the drummer's first major role on screen. Hawkins decided against carving himself out of place in Hollywood, however, and the only other credits you can find on his IMDb page boil down to a long list of Foo Fighters video promos. Taylor Hawkins had played with the Foo Fighters since 1997, taking over for the band's first drummer, William Goldsmith. The change proved to be a natural fit, as Hawkins had been thriving with the world-renowned rock band. The New York Times described his drumming style as an amalgamation of Stuart Copeland of The Police and Roger Taylor of Queen. It would have been unlikely for the Foo Fighters to recruit an unknown musician off the street to play with a superstar like Dave Grohl. Saving drums, Jessica Day. May I blow drums? So they didn't. They hired Taylor Hawkins. Hawkins had been playing the drums since the age of 10. His musical ambitions set ablaze after attending a concert by the British powerhouse Queen in 1982. He told Kerrang! in an interview posted in 2021, It changed everything, and I was never the same because of it. It was the beginning of my obsession with rock and roll, and I knew that I wanted to be in a huge rock band. The Queen concert in September 1982 at the Irvine Meadows Amphitheater was an extremely pivotal moment in the life of young Taylor Hawkins. He told Kerrang! After that concert, I don't think I slept for three days. I was just starting to get into the drums and Roger Taylor became my hero. Queen's drummer became an influence and source of technique to the young Hawkins. He told 60 Minutes in 2014, I wanted to be Roger Taylor and I wanted to be in Queen. Hawkins got to regularly play out that fantasy in a way during Foo Fighters' 2021-2022 tour. According to E! News, Hawkins would routinely emerge from behind the drum kit and switch places with frontman Dave Grohl in order to belt out Queen's powerful ballad, Somebody to Love. In 2019, Hawkins got the chance to play with his idol when Taylor played on Get the Money, Hawkins' album with his band The Coattail Riders. The two monumental drummers struck up a friendship, and when Hawkins died in 2022, Taylor on Instagram likened the loss to that of a younger favorite brother. The exuberance that he played the drums, which is why it's so heartbreaking to know that he won't be doing that. While their spacey, keyboard-driven progressive sound differs greatly from Foo Fighters' brand of alternative meets arena rock, Yes had a lot in common with Dave Grohl's post-Nirvana project. For example, both are inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and both continued on for years well after they could have feasibly ended, thanks in large part to the efforts of Taylor Hawkins. The drummer joined Foo Fighters in 1997 as an urgent replacement for the band's previous drummer, William Goldsmith. 
According to the Chattanooga polls, Hawkins attended high school with John Davison, a musician who played bass for the 90s jam band Sky Cries Mary, sang with the prog rock group Glass Hammer, and also played with Roundabout, a Yes tribute band named for one of its best-known songs. When John Anderson was fired from Yes in 2008 after decades with the band, bassist Chris Squire started looking around for new singers and thought of Davison because of Hawkins' recommendation. Squire said, My friend Taylor Hawkins had been telling me for years, if you ever need a replacement, I know exactly the guy. When he wasn't jamming with the Foo Fighters, Taylor Hawkins found the time to make lots of music with a number of other lower-profile, musically explorative side projects. In 2006, 2010, and 2019, Hawkins released solo albums under the moniker Taylor Hawkins and the Coattail Riders. The last album involved a slew of incredible musical collaborators like Chrissy Hind of The Pretenders, Nancy Wilson of Heart, Joe Walsh of The Eagles, Duff McKagan of Guns N' Roses, and country singer Leanne Rimes. According to Rolling Stone, Hawkins also established Chevy Metal, which the musician called a 70s dirt rock cover band that played covers of semi-obscure songs by some of his favorite classic rock acts. Two members of Chevy Metal, bassist Wiley Hodgden and guitarist Mick Murphy, also teamed up with Hawkins for the power trio Birds of Satan, which put out its one and only album in 2014. In 2020, Hawkins put together another three-piece band, NHC, a supergroup named after the initials of its members, Dave Navarro of Jane's Addiction and the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Hawkins, and Jane's Addiction bassist Chris Chaney. Somewhat unlike many of his publicly divorced rock and roll peers, Taylor Hawkins was very quiet about his offstage life as a long-married husband and father of multiple children. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, Taylor married his wife Allison Hawkins in 2005. Hawkins rarely spoke about a spouse, but did admit to writing a song about the relationship on the 2019 Taylor Hawkins and the Coattail Writers album Get the Money called I Really Blew It. The marriage of Taylor and Allison Hawkins resulted in three children. Oldest son Oliver was born in 2008. Daughter Annabelle came along the next year, and five years later, the couple welcomed another child named Everly. Equally reluctant to share much with the media about his children, Taylor's kids did serve as musical inspiration. According to Joe Daly, Taylor wrote a song in honor of Annabelle appropriately titled Middle Child. For more than 20 years, Taylor Hawkins was one of the most famous musicians in the world. He almost always looked like he was having a great time on stage and in videos, bashing away at the drums. The man clearly liked being a drummer, and he enjoyed it so much that it was an interest he was happy to share with regular people far outside of his orbit of celebrity. On March 22, 2022, per CNN, Foo Fighters were supposed to play at the Asuncio Nico Festival in Paraguay, only for the show to be canceled over severely inclement weather. Nine-year-old Paraguayan drummer Emma Sofia didn't get to see Hawkins' Foo Fighters, so instead, she acted on a tip from a family friend who let her know the hotel where the group was staying. Sofia brought her drum kit, set it up, and played a half-hour's worth of Nirvana and Foo Fighters songs to a crowd that cheered so loud it caught Hawkins' attention. He came outside, apologized to the fans for the canceled show, and sought out Sofia. Hawkins took a photo with her, and they chatted for a while. Sophia's father told CNN, She said that day was about to be the worst day of her life and suddenly turned into the best day of her life. 